So now we come on to a couple of videos dealing with the topics of environmental and interior lighting. These two practices have an awful lot in common in 2018, as we will see, but we're going to split this up into two videos, so this first one is on environmental lighting. And we'll come to interiors next. Now, environmental lighting can also cross over with interiors a little bit. Normally, when we say environmental, what we mean is an exterior scene, an outdoor scene. But of course, if you've got one of those situations where perhaps you're rendering a vehicle inside, you know, a warehouse environment, right, and there's no actual warehouse model, there's just an HDR backdrop or similar, then that, even though it's meant to look like an interior, it's still an environmental lighting situation. Basically, any time that we're going to be planning to use a backdrop to surround our models and our objects, but our objects are not themselves enclosed in another room object. Again, as I said in the introduction to this whole series, we're going to have a bit of a zigzag here, so we're going to be referencing certain things that we've talked about before, plus a couple of details that we'll skip over for later videos, but I'll point out some of that as we go. So. What we've got here is a nice simple scene with a couple of objects. We've got this reflective blobby blue object under this little canopy thing, which is just plain gray, and a dielectric mesh up here of our Greek statue. And what you can see we are using in the scene is we have a light over here, which is, of course, an environment light. We have an image in our backdrop here, just a textured environment. Let me get rid of the sun sky because I'm not using it. That's just giving us an HDR. And of course, we're using the sample backdrop with our environment light to light this whole scene. Now, one of the ways that you might think would be quite common to light an exterior or environmental scene like this, as well as an interior, as we'll see after, would be to use GI. Pro tip, don't bother. Here's what I'll show you. Basically, you can see our render here and the you know quality that we're getting and you can sort of see how quickly it's going through and updating with an environment light here you can see that the light is using six samples okay so let's actually kill off our environment light pop open the scene editor just turn it off there well you know everything goes black we'll turn on enable gi we're going to use monte carlo here um, we're not going to bother with the interpolated option because we're wanting full quality so we're going to turn on sample backdrop and away we go. You can see our render is happening here. Of course, because I'm no longer using environment light, you'll notice the glass and some of the reflections look weird. That goes back to what we were talking about in the shading model. You'll notice that I'm on ray trace only here. Of course, if I were using a GI, then one of the things I would have to do would be to use ray trace and backdrop for both my reflections and my refractions. Of course, we set ourselves to one diffuse bounce because what we're wanting to look at for the moment is just how the GI compares to the environment light. And so we can see it rendering away and of course, you know, cleaning itself up as it ticks along here. This is six sample. Okay, so there we have it, the end result of using GI. And we can see the time here 82.14 seconds and you can see you know there's a little bit of grain here and there especially in the shadowed areas let's do a comparison with our environment light and there we have it that's our environment light as we can see the quality is more or less the same and there's no reason it should not be both six samples but we see 75 seconds so a little bit quicker not a huge amount but a little bit. Of course, this is only a simple scene. If you've got, you know, much more complex shaders or many more objects, that would translate into a bit more time saving. If you've got motion blur or more passes, I'm mean, only using eight camera samples here, that would translate into more time savings. Those time savings would multiply up. There's a basic rule that comes out of this, and that is that it is always quicker or better quality or the same quality in less time to use an environment light 
than it is to use background sampled radiosity, background GI. We'll see that this goes the same for the interiors afterwards, but the simple rule is that there's almost never any reason in any scene, no matter what you're doing, interior, exterior, glasses, subsurface scattering, whatnot, to use backdrop GI. If you're doing an environmental lighting scene, you've got an HDR in the backdrop or something else, whether it's sun sky or a gradient or whatever else, and you're wanting to light from the backdrop, don't use backdrop GI, use an environment light. You'll get as good a quality or better in the same time or less. Of course, you can notice the thing that I did over here by making these guys ray trace only. And of course, my environment light is visible to camera to account for the refractions of our object here. If you go back to the old video on the shading model for reflection and refraction, you'll remember that those are the settings I recommended using. And you'll see how with this setup for environmental lighting, that is exactly what we want to have. Of course, if I was having this setup and reflection options were ray trace and backdrop, then I would be getting double reflection, as we saw in the video on the reflection model. Same for refraction, if that was ray trace and backdrop, I would now be getting double refractions. And so, of course, technically speaking, that is breaking PBR. Although, of course, you could go for the ray trace and backdrop and have the environment light not visible to camera. Personally, I prefer just to Remember, everything goes on ray trace only and make all of my lights visible to camera all the time. There is, of course, I probably should point out another way to handle this thing um, with the reflection options and the environment light. And that, of course, is to use ray tracing and backdrop for your materials. And, of course, you get rid of the double specular, the double reflection, by disabling effect specular in the good old environment light. Now, in this case, you can see that it has dealt with the double reflection that would be appearing on our little blob item down here. But you can see that it's not only the visible to camera that affects the refractions, it is also the effect specular. So you would want to set your refractions to ray trace and backdrop. And so now you've got single reflection and single refraction. I could have mentioned this way back in the other video when we talked about the shading model. I'm mentioning it now because we're more focused on the function of the environment light itself. The reason that I prefer to do it the way I do is the fact that we have important sampling on the environment light and that will lead to better quality reflections and refractions and slightly faster render times in some, not all cases, um, but it won't really give you any longer render times in any cases. So you could do it this way, you know, have the ray trace and backdrop and no effect specular and visibility in your actual environment light itself. But as I say, my preferred way of doing things is to have all my surfaces set to ray trace only and to use the direct lighting options that are available here. You can see how the options play against one another. So, of course, you can set that as required for your own scenes. Now, that's all well and good when you're only wanting this, you know, single ray, this single, you know, pass of lighting. But what happens in the event where you are wanting to have multi-bounce GI. Let's say I wanted a couple of bounces here. Let's say, I don't know, three, shall we? What would we do in that instance? Well, in global illumination, of course, you can choose to have the sample backdrop on and off. So we can turn the backdrop stuff off and still enable GI. And what we're getting now is we're getting that first bounce, if that's what you want to call it, from the environment light and then the subsequent bounces are being done by the GI. That means that for actually what would be three bounce GI, I only need two bounces, because of course I am now getting one bounce in inverted commas, which is the environment light, and then I'm getting two bounces of GI, which would be the same as using three bounce GI and 
sample backdrop radiosity. We can see this, of course, because if we look at our good old buffers here, I can come to, let's say, the diffuse indirect, and you can see the parts of the image that are being illuminated purely by the GI. And as you can see, there's no illumination on the top of our little plinth, roof, whatever it is, object here, because of course there's no illumination coming from the backdrop. It's only the environment light bouncing off the floor and off this blue thing and off the walls and between them and so on. What this also means we can do is we can get interpolated radiosity into the mix. So if we're wanting to speed up our renders by using interpolated GI, then of course we can get a very clean, effectively brute force first bounce because that is our environment light. Lights are, for, for want of a better term, brute force in inverted commas. But then my secondary illumination, that can be interpolated. And if it's a little bit, you know, noisy or splotchy or something, let's turn up my rays a little bit, shall we? Let's say 128, 128. Let's give them a big old pixel spacing here. So as it's got loads of, you know, it's not, not very detailed illumination coming off my GI. There you go. You can see that that's really fast to render and it's not particularly accurate in terms of you know shadow details in the corners and this that and the other but of course when it is mixed with the environment light providing our first bounce then the whole thing together actually looks pretty good pretty realistic pretty natural and of course our nice little corner shading is replaced because that is of course the product of the direct lighting itself and so that enables us to get these multi-bounce GI renders without having the long times of brute force and enables us to get interpolated into the mix and work for us quite well. So there you go. That is exterior or environmental lighting. That is now the full story on using the environment light. Obviously, we've seen traces of it in the backdrops video right at the beginning in the shading models video before and of course in the lighting and different light types and light intensity usage videos you can see how we bring all of those little bits of knowledge together to use our environment lights in exterior settings and yes I know we haven't done the work on GI yet don't worry we will look at the GI system in coming videos and of course we will come back to some of the stuff that we've been talking about here and indeed what we're going to talk about next which will be how we deal with these same sorts of issues when it comes to interior lighting.